بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I wanted to share with you in these few minutes a small reflection about overcoming tribulation and even the purpose of tribulation and one of those the wisdoms embedded in it in the noble Quran Allah Azza wa Jal talks about this or one of the manifestations of tribulation in the battle of Uhud and Uhud is one of the very difficult instances in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's almost killed his beloved uncle has been killed 70 of the great you know sahaba the leaders of the muslims uh, have been slaughtered Uh, it's a very difficult, humiliating time. Even Abu Sufyan and some of his companions actually trash talk against the Muslims as they're walking away from the battlefield. Some of these more beloved people of the Muslims have died in this great tribulation. We can say they died, but you know, the death of one is tragic enough. The death of seventy is, you know, no small thing to bear. And it's not like seventy soldiers in an army. You know, we think of soldiers now. We think of an abstract, you know, entity that we are distant from. Only their families would feel the consequences of their loss. But the Medina is a very tight knit, small community. Every life is felt. People are neighbors to each other, and you know, everybody's feeling the loss of these individuals. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "لا تحسب أن الله لا لا تحسب أن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات." Don't don't assume about the people who were killed in Allah's path, meaning referring to Uhud, that they they've died. أمواتن. بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون. No, no, they're alive, and they are being provided for within the company of their master. فريحين بما أتاهم الله من فضله. They are overjoyed because of what Allah has given them from His blessing. In other words, the people that have died have immediately gone into Jannah, and Allah is already giving them gifts. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ And they're already congratulating each other about the people who haven't joined them yet. So they're in Jannah, waiting for other companions to make it to Jannah. Here on earth, people are crying about the loss of seventy, and those seventy are up in heaven, partying and waiting for more and more of them to join their ranks, to join this blessing. Allah خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْسَرُونَ So that no more fear and no grief could be on them again. يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ They're congratulating with each other of the great luxury and the favor and the blessing of Allah that's come to them. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Now Allah says, and Allah by the, in fact does not waste, does not put away, do away with the compensation of those who truly excelled and those who truly truly believed. المؤمنين. He didn't say الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Al Mu'minin refers to people who are mature in their faith, and so you would think up until now this ayah is talking about the people who've already made it to heaven, and thus obviously they're qualified as true believers because they already passed the test and they're already in paradise. But then Allah goes and uses the word al-ladina in the next ayah, which actually means it's a description. So Allah is saying that those people that Allah whose deeds Allah will not waste, whose deeds Allah will continue to reward. Aren't just people who are in Jannah; they're also the following: الذين استجابوا لله والرسول من بعد ما أصابهم القرح. Powerful words. He says those who responded to Allah and the Messenger even after what terrible injury had hit them. قرح is actually different from جرح. قرح is actually when the injury hits the bone. Like جرح could be like a cut or something like that. قرح is when it goes deep and it's hit your bone, like your bone is exposed with an injury. And Allah is speaking figuratively here, also talking about Muslims that they've been harmed, their morale is down. You know, the Prophet ﷺ himself almost bled. You know, actually did bleed, lost his tooth. It was rumored that he's been killed. All this loss has happened in the Muslim battlefield. They, to survive, they have to run up a mountain. Even that's captured in the Quran. And at this point, they are at a, as far as their morale is concerned, they're at an all-time low, right? And the Messenger says, ﷺ, he gets the news that the enemy forces are coming for round two. They're coming back around and they're about to attack again. So the Prophet ﷺ says, "Okay, get up. Let's go after them instead of them coming after us." Now imagine he's talking to people whose morale is totally down, and they've lost in battle and they're injured. Allah doesn't just say "jah," He says "qarh." They're deeply injured. Allah says those who responded to Allah and the Messenger even after that kind of injury had touched them, meaning these are true believers. In the heart of tribulation, they say, "Okay, we're ready again." He can barely stand up and he's ready. He stands up again. And Allah didn't just call them, because in the previous ayah He called them mu'minun. You all know there's Islam, there's iman, and then there's what? There's ihsan. There's the best rank, right? Allah says, "Al-ladina ahsanu minhum wa taqaw ajrun alim." Those who excelled among them, those who excelled among them and had taqwa, they have huge reward, huge compensation. 
In other words, it can be nothing but the recognition that Allah is right there in our company. Allah is with us. The recognition of Allah's presence that will motivate me to get right back up and say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go again. That's Ihsan. That's Ihsan. So Ihsan is what got them up even out of their tribulation, even though they were injured and they were hurt. And then, what is it that, you know, obviously you're injured, so you're not as able to fight an enemy. So there's fear. There's fear of the enemy. Allah says, after their Ihsan, they even showed Taqwa, meaning they only feared Allah. What taqaw ajrun azim. People who did that, they have huge, huge compensation. There's a small lesson of how Allah takes, puts Muslims in the position of great trial and great difficulty, and then uses that as an occasion for them to rise to the occasion, and put, describes them in the same passage as He describes people who are already in Jannah. Imagine that. He described these people in the same rank as He described the people who have already made in Jannah. May Allah help us learn from these lessons and motivate ourselves to be of those, to be ranked among those who've already made it into Jannah so we can join their company and their ranks.